Good afternoon, and welcome to my daily talk, broadcast, live stream, whatever you want to call that. Um, before I start, let me tell you this is episode number 432. The topic today is dating after breakup. What is the recipe for success? So let me begin with introducing myself. I should say let me follow up by introducing myself, since that might help explain why I'm going to talk about this. <laughs> my, name, my name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. Helping strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And I do these talks every day for messages for the masculine to inspire the feminine heart. Initially on Facebook, and then I do a replay on YouTube, as well as putting the audio onto my podcast. So depending on where you are watching or listening to this, you may not be on the live broadcast at the time it happens. Just so you know. So I do this at 5 p.m. Pacific time every day. Um, have done now for over a year. And this topic has been brewing. Actually, I was reading a couple of really sleazy articles today, so I had to talk about this. Um, hang on a second. A quick slurp. A little dry mouth, I'm going to clear that up. Okay, so, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, thanks for coming in, and if you have seen it before, thanks for coming back. Um, again, these are talks every day called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. Today's number 432. There's a few of these out there now. And today's topic, as I said, is dating after breakup. What is the recipe for success? So before I get to that, let me, let me um, share some of the recipes for disaster so you know what you might want to avoid. Because it's good to know what you're avoiding first before you know what to do right. Because some of the obvious answers will be the inverse of what I'm telling you first. This is not rocket science, you know. So first of all, probably one of the f biggest um, disastrous mistakes to make after dating and break uh, should say after breaking up is dating right away. In fact, to have almost no breath between when you broke up and when you started again. Right there. For some people, that's their escape plan. Because the truth is, they're not willing to face the pain. And I'm going to get to that a lot later on, about how you need to face and heal and change that. But that's a sneak preview. So first of all, is jumping right into another relationship. That's one thing that is a pretty much guaranteed path to disaster. Second one is to basically... Um, Get back in the date. Well, no, 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 let me say this. After the breakup, okay, I'll put it this way, it's where it wants to come through, curl up in a fetal position and cry and never come out again, which some people think they're going to do. They spend ages, maybe even years, being so invested in their pain and wounds, they never heal. So there's two extremes. One is ignoring the pain completely and just going and dating straight away without any time to review, to change, to transform. Then on the other extreme are those who basically are so... Um, mired in the pain and suffering that they've chosen to take on. They become a victim of the upset and the hurt, wounded feelings and never want to date again. Though they curl up in a ball, close up and never come out. Or at least not for years. And when they do come out, they haven't healed. They've just prolonged the agony. Now, you might know somebody like this. I'm sure you've never been through this yourself. So that's the two extremes. In between that is... How do I call this? Um, there's a term for this. I want to say it's, is it, I think it's, um, no, hang on, I'm, I'm, I'm conflating two ideas together. Let me explain what I'm talking about first and you understand what I mean. First of all, um, especially if you were scorned, and this is mainly for the ladies, because men do this too, but not quite as elegantly, is <laughs> if you were scorned in a past relationship, when you got broken up with, they dumped you and you got really pissed off, the temptation is to go out and just go screw somebody, as in revenge sex or revenge dating, to go and see somebody else immediately, Hopefully so that your ex will see you with them, so they'll feel jealous. This is nothing to do with romance, or love, or real integrity. This is about revenge, and resentment, and judgment. All of which are weapons of the upset feelings that are getting resolved. So as you can tell from the three I've given you so far, three, yeah, three, I've given you so far, none of them are really effective for where you want to go. In fact, what they do is they keep you in the past because you never move forward. And I'll explain, I'll explain, that, I'll explain that in a second. So that's three options. There's a fourth one brewing. Let me see if that comes up. And again, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, these are spontaneous, unscripted, unplanned. Just the title is planned. And so what comes through, comes through as, as it chooses to. So I'm merely a pawn in this game of communication. <laughs> so that's, that's, let's play with three. If a fourth one shows up, I'll come back to it. So first of all, the desire to just go and jump into another relationship and just like forget everything that happened before and pretend nothing happened. The problem is, 
your heart, your cells, your gut, especially, and so does your mind, remember everything that happened. What you're doing is intending to move on to somebody else is to put um, spackle over the wounds, so to speak. That basically, if you are someone who, if you've been through a bad relationship or a breakup, and you're jumping into another relationship again, you may, have a vague, you may have a vague hope that this person will be the healing agent you need to heal from your past trauma. Mistaken approach is not their job. But the other part is that from doing that, is you're not actually allowing your body to grieve. And yes, grieve is the word. When you have a breakup in a relationship, like any transition, be it death, leaving, um, breakup, any of those things, the human experience that happens after that is grief. And I'll get to that in a second, explain what that is. Because it's different from obviously from when you've lost someone's, well, it's usually, usually, different from someone who has died. Of course, you've been to somebody for 25 years in marriage and then it breaks up. That can be almost similar feelings, but I'll get to explain that in a moment. So let me come back to that. I will. So again, the jumping into the next relationship without having any time to deal with what's happening, the grief included, is is definitely a temptation for disaster. In fact, it's a pretty much guarantee for disaster because again, that person's job in the new relationship is not to heal you. You may want them to, but it's not their training. Well, 99.9% of the time, it's not their training. So don't use them as your, as your therapist because that, first of all, if it is their job, you should be paying them. And secondly, if you're with them and you're not dealing with your own, you're not being in the relationship, they won't want to be in a relationship with you because you're going to be, they're going to be tired of being your, your counselor. Not cool either way. If you're going to, and so I'm doing layers of this, so the next layer up, if you're going to the next relationship without dealing, with, without dealing with any of the history, even though you may not use them as your therapist, you will use them as your, um, well, punching bag, crying pillow, and teddy bear rolled into one. It's kind of the same thing as a therapist, but without the official title. You'll basically use them to exacerbate and try to work through your stuff. Again, they won't be happy. So please, for the sake of your next partner, don't jump into a new relationship after breaking up from the old one. It isn't healthy, and it's definitely not good for them either. The first, the other one I mentioned was about shutting down completely and never coming out again, at least that's the intention. That's an avoidance of dealing with the pain, because what's happening is, as much as, you're, as much as you would be sitting in the pain, you're not transitioning it, you're actually staying stuck in the hurt feelings, out of a sense maybe of, um, Entitlement, yes, entitlement, or at least a place of feeling like a victim where you feel like you deserve to be um, taken pity on, sympathy, none of which are healthy, by the way. It's, I mentioned this yesterday talking about how kids, when they fall down, oftentimes they will look around first before they cry, like look around first, so when he's out there they'll go, okay, someone's giving me attention, if I cry I'll get their attention. Same thing is true when we're adults. We get in a bad, upset, emotional place, we'll shut down. And we'll try to put out like red flags going, help me, help me, help me. Hope somebody comes over and gives you comfort. First of all, if you really want comfort, damn well ask for it. Don't pretend or fake it or do that sort of stuff. It's not working. Secondly, if you are really, really willing to get out of this place, then get some help. I'll come back to that one again in a minute too, because I want to I want to talk into the grief piece for a moment. Yes, so get some help. Grief. So as I mentioned, grief is one of these um, unspoken rules, unspoken um, experiences that we go through after a relationship breakup. Now, depending on the degree of the impact of the relationship, how emotionally invested you were, how deep it went, how long it went, how much commitment there was, how much trauma there may have been, how much of a pain in the breakup there may have been, all will add to what level of grief you experience. But grief is grief. It's just a matter of degree. Now, grief is a wonderfully complex experience that isn't trackable in the sense that you can't go at step one, two, three, four, five. There are books about this, and I can tell you now. There are five or so stages of grief. However, they're not in sequence. There's not fixed time. There's no calculation of saying, well, if this one takes this, this many days, this one will take this many days. It doesn't happen that way. Also, there's no guarantee it'll go through once only. It can go through many times. So again, any order, any amount of time, any number of times. And the reality is, is that you can't avoid it. You can suppress it, as I mentioned earlier about jumping into another relationship, pretend it didn't happen, 
or you can avoid it by just burying yourself in your upset and misery without you doing anything about it. Because grief is a cleansing process. Truly, grief is a healthy thing to have happen because if you don't, you're suppressing or ignoring or pretending not to know, not to deal with it. Grief is a powerful way to actually heal and transform. Because what grief deals with, the five elements of grief basically are um, anger, resentment, sadness, there's two more will come back to me. Um, oh, what's the word? We'll come back to me. There's, there's two more stages and I'll come back to you if I remember me. I'll let it keep populating. If you remember, please put them on the screen. If not, I'll hopefully by the end of the broadcast. But what I want to say is that if you are someone who is facing the grief, congratulations, and I am proud of you and honored to know you because grief is something that's faced head on. To know that it doesn't have, and the problem with grief for most people who like to figure things out is you can't figure it out. Grief is something that you must trust, and it is a trust that is beyond your um, intentions because it is a powerful process, again. But when you get to the other side of grief, and you will get to the other side of grief if you prove acceptance, that's one, thank you, thank you Danny, that's one of them, yes, so there's one more, there's five all together. So acceptance, resentment, sadness, anger, there's another one that's, um, I think it's like negotiation, not negotiation, similar, it's, um, oh, it will come back to me, it will come back to me, there's another one, anyway, so thank you for that Danny, I appreciate it. Um, So the journey from either skipping into another relationship or to a little ball is you've got to go through the grief process. And a lot of that is actually going to deal with the emotional baggage. So, yes, Karen, it, yeah, it is a good point. It takes courage to face your grief, yes. And I'm absolutely adamant that you have to. I've been through that myself enough times now, I've had a few relationships over the years, um, that I've really gotten to know that it's almost like a, um, it's not a badge of courage necessarily, but it certainly is a reminder that it's there and needs to be done and it is courage it is courage yes um, but the truth is actually it's easier to do it most of us are scared of, of facing grief we'd rather pretend it didn't happen and, and sub sublimate it and pretend it just doesn't mean anything but the reality is that we can't get through it because grief won't go away it just sits there and waits so it's not so much courage as um, giving into it <laughs> in a way because it is really required so, to get to where you want to go to have a healthy relationship, yes, and you, and you know from your experiences, for you how to run from it, exactly, yeah, same here, I, yeah, I agree with you. Um, so the lesson here is if you want to have an amazing relationship after you've had a breakup, it's important to do the work between. So if you come out of a relationship that ends and it's traumatic and it's upsetting, to just continue on, this, oh, that's the third one, fourth one, is to move on as if nothing happened. And just keep going forward and then at some point in time meet somebody else in the relationship because the thing about it is what you do when you do that is go numb and by going numb by continuing on as if nothing happened that's great until you get another relationship because one or two things happens in that new relationship that could be months to years down the road is you'll stay numb in that relationship because you've got it so locked in to protect yourself in which case you won't be fully feeling or fully felt not a good experience or secondly the numbness will start to um, diminish and all those wounds inside, those hurt feelings, will come to the surface, or I should say, will be revealed because the surface will be no longer numb. And again, you're back to where you started with a relationship where the partner ends up being a therapist. Not good. So either option, any one of those options, please, for the sake of your next relationship, is do the work. Do the... I forgot to mute my computer. Okay. Is do the work. Take the steps to heal yourself first. The true part of success after a breakup in a relationship is to take, one, to take care of yourself, two, to do the emotional work and healing work to transform your pain into love, and third, to really work through this, the, false, the limiting beliefs, judgments, and blame you have on the other person, and fifth, fourth, 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 face the grief, which is part of the process for me. So, I trust this makes sense. It's simple in some ways, complicated in other ways, but the reality is for most people, taking the high road to do this work, to taking the path to actually heal and to become whole again, is what people avoid. So let me just speak to that piece for a moment. We've never been taught in school or by a parent, usually, at least 
99.9% of us haven't been taught by parents or school or any academic training that after a relationship, it's okay to feel upset. It's okay to be in grief. It's okay to feel traumatized. It's okay to get support. It's okay to get counsel. We're told just, for men especially, it's like just, you know, just suck it up, man up, move on with your life, and then meet somebody else, you'll be fine. And ladies have a similar paradigm because unfortunately, this world is becoming too um, balanced in that sense, and it's not good for either one. The reality is that for those of us who have been through relationship break, breakups and painful um, separation, is the way we're putting it, requires us to truly be willing to face our demons, to face our upset, to face our hurt feelings. And for me personally, it's part of my work more than anything else to help my clients heal because it's challenging to see my, my clients wounded, but it's the best place to see them start the healing journey because they're facing their wounds at that point. The reality is this. You can go through your life any way you wish. That's obviously your free choice. <clears throat> and based on what you've learned to this point and through your upbringing and different things you were taught and trained by school, by parents, by everyone around you, you may have realized that relationship happened a certain way and that's where you've done it. That may or may not be the best way you can do it. So if you're not learning from books, trainers, teachers, retreats, programs, coaches, the better ways of being in a relationship, then you're leaving something on the table. You're not being able to do with it. Yes, Sue, yeah. So it's important to process through the grief and be with it, yes. So my point I want to make is Many people are afraid of getting help because somehow they feel like they should be should be okay and, and be in a place where they can move on at their own time. And somehow if they seek help, one, they're weak, two, they're um, less than, or well, same as we and we, they're not living their full truth. But the reality is that if you do seek counsel or coaching or therapy or guidance of some sort or other, you're actually wiser and will be healthier than the other people who don't. Those people who continue on with the next relationship, pretending that everything's fine, are going to end up with either ulcers, therapy at the later date, cancer, yes, even cancer can be caused by repressed emotional upsets. There's so much that is um, suppressed this way that creates toxins and upsets and hurt feelings that don't get resolved unless you face them. So my invitation to you, my encouragement to you, is if you are between relationships, especially, or when you next face that happening, if that happens down the road, hope it doesn't for you, you actually stay in the relationship you're in if you want to be in it. There's so much I can say about that, but I won't. That you will take the time to get support, get help, get counsel to heal the wounds inside, to heal those painful, hurt places that need to be loved back to wholeness again so you can be able to love properly again. Because the other part of this is, which I did mention sort of kinda, is that the more that you have suppressed inside, the more that you are unable to share your emotional expression, the more that you have wounds that are not healed, the less available you are to love. Which means that you'll be numb, as I mentioned, you'll be unavailable to love your partner at the level that you want to, and they won't feel loved by you either, so nobody wins. So it, it behooves you, yes, it behooves you, fancy word, to do the work to get yourself taken care of, to take care of yourself, to heal, so the next relationship can be thriving, alive, joyful, and fulfilling. That is the path to success in going out and dating again. I think that makes the point clearly, I've said it enough times. So, having said that, um, before I tell you when you find these broadcasts, if you're in that place, you want some help, if you definitely are ready to get some guidance, counsel, and support in love and relationships, reach out to me. And you can do that by going barryselby.com forward slash chat. That's the shortcut. But basically, what it is, there is a discovery session where you can get help, guidance from me, a 30 minute conversation. You go to my website, sign up there with um, under Let's Chat, and you can fill up the, uh, get on my calendar, fill up the form, and sign up. And we can talk. So, Danny, what was that? Men, men seem to deal with this better. My, my ex is already in a relationship. Well, Danny, uh, <laughs> let me say something about that. We men are less emotionally expressive than you women, to be blunt. And to be, and to be that, that simplistic. That's the reality of who we are. So to say that um, men deal with this better, 
No, I would disagree with that. We just don't express as much as you do, generally speaking, ladies. So he may have done what I said, which shortcut the healing process and gone straight into another relationship. In fact, I strongly suspect he did because men do that. We men tend not to think about the emotional baggage that we're building by not healing the pain and wounds from the past relationship. This is one reason I work with women because they're more willing to get the help when men don't, don't listen as much. And I'm one of them, so I understand. I'm speaking from that place. So your point about men seem to deal with this better and your ex is already late in your relationship, I strongly suspect he just numbed out. He may have suppressed it, he may have pretended it didn't happen, he may have felt it was okay, and moved on. So first of all, don't judge yourself for not moving on. You're probably the wiser person. Secondly, he's probably going to end up being in a bad space down the road in that relationship because he won't be fully expressing with his new partner because he's going to be holding back from the wounds that he's not willing to heal. And if you're smart, Danny, you'll get that healing happening now. So when you do go into a new relationship, you're going to be in a better place. So that makes more sense because the reality with this is you can heal now or you can pay the price later, Simplistic, simplistically put. So I hope you understand that your ex actually is doing is not doing better off than you are. He's actually doing worse based on the fact he's choosing to move on without doing the work. You will do the work and take care of yourself, and that's a smarter move. So, recapping quickly. Um, again, barrysurvey.com forward slash chat is where you can sign up for a discovery session with me. This broadcast, as with all my broadcasts, goes on my business page on Facebook, which is barrysurvey.author. Also onto my YouTube channel, which is also Barry Selby. The playlist is Messages for the Masculine. And now onto my podcast on iTunes, which is called Messages for the Masculine. If you want help, reach out to me. You can browse my website, which is barryselby.com. You can check out my programs, my coaching, and my online programs. Should I say that twice? Or my book. Yes, I've even got a book. So you're welcome, Danny. I hope that can be assistance. If you want to reach out for the help, you know where to find me. Um, and that's it. I'll be back again tomorrow because this is a daily broadcast at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Once again, that'll be number 433, I think. And my, invest my invitation to you for your homework, yes, I do give homework, is if you are someone who has been through some tough times in a relationship and you haven't yet done the work, be willing to be honest with yourself and see what's real. Don't try to pretend that it's okay. Don't sweep it under the rug and don't ignore it. At least for yourself, be willing to grieve be willing to heal, be willing to love yourself again. That's your homework. I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care.